National Master Glenn Beatty. Unapologetically Black Chess. Secrets Relevant. Hi, my name is Glenn and uh, welcome to our channel. We are going to look at a game that I played against Mark Esterman, International Master Mark Esterman. He have a great book out. His book is really good and it is called uh, Mayhem in the Mora. It is over 300 pages and it is a highly recommended book. It is a gem, so um, go buy his book. Okay, this game was played at the Miami International Tournament and I think it was seven to nine rounds. Um, Mark played the Cecilia defense against me, which I was very happy because I am a Cecilia player. And let's take a look how this game progressed, okay? I played E4, Mark played C5, the Sicilian defense, of course. Okay, and I developed naturally. D6, D4, CXD, Knight XD, Knight F, Knight F6, Knight C3, A6. And now we go into the Knight Dwarf variation, which is very popular at Grandmaster level. And it has been around for years and years. Of course, Fisher played the Knight Dwarf, and there have been a lot of great players who have played the Knight Dwarf. So let's continue. Bishop to E3, this is an English attack. D6, I mean E6, which is a uh, very flexible variation of the um, knight draw. E5 is more, E5 I think is a little more aggressive. Okay, but E6 is a good line. Okay, queen to um, D2, ready to triple zero. B5, okay, now he's coming. Okay, the idea for B5, of course, is to kick my knight out of the center by playing B4, and then his knight can take on E4. And also he can fian shuttle his queen side laser for the bishop, we shall say. And of course, I play F3 with the idea of starting a pawn chain and expanding on the queen side. I mean, expanding on the king side with G4, G5, etc. Okay, uh, B knight to D7, G4, knight to B6. Oh, this is an interesting idea. So I play A4. Now, the reason why I did play A4 was to uh, weaken up the C4 square because I know his knight wanted the C4. Uh, the computer recommend in this position for black knight to C4. That's what the computer recommend, just uh, bringing the knight to C4. I wasn't worried about this move, but I guess the more I look at it, it does make sense because, well, well, first of all, I have to capture, right? And with his pawn capture, he'll have the open B file for his rook to put pressure on B2. So I guess he should have dropped his knight into C4, but he played a human move, which is B4, knight to A2. A5, C3, A attacking the pawn in my center. Uh, well, 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 I should say attacking the pawn that had traveled to my side of the board. He captured, I captured with the knight. Now, just take a look at this position for a second. I think black is, have serious problems at this juncture because white have the simple idea of placing his D knight or his C knight on a B5, castle queen side, and then put pressure on, on the D6 pawn. And white just controlled the queen side. So I think black is in trouble here, really good. Maybe black have to really, at this point, play a move like D5. Maybe white, you no know, black just have to hit in the center. 
Okay, but he developed his bishop. And now I play knight to b5, d knight to b5. Queen to b8, which was the only way to defend d6. Okay, I kicked the knight out of the center. Now I'm threatening, of course, to win a piece. I'm just threatening a simple move. Queen to, um, uh, queen takes b6, but this queen is strong on c uh, on on the d4 square. Okay, let's see how the game went. He played knight to c8. Now let's just take a look at this position. His knight travel, right? Basically, his knight travel from b8, d7, b6, c8. His queen travel from d8 to b8. What progress have he made? He haven't made any, and his pieces are on horrible squares. Just look, his knight is on c8, his queen is on b8. This is just a this is just a terrible position for black. Okay, so I play bishop to e2 and the Silicon Monster wanted me to play bishop to h3, followed by putting pressure on the on the long diagonal. Only on the h3 to c8 diagonal. Which that kind of makes sense. Okay, so now he played rook to b8. Okay, now I'm threatening to win a piece by bishop takes h5. He forced to defend it, and now f5. Look at the space advantage. Black is getting crushed in this position, just literally crushed. Okay, bishop to e7, and now not triple zero. Okay, just look at the position. He's in trouble. Now, one, let's count. One, two, three, four, five pieces on the eighth rank. This position is visually horrible. It just looks hard. And at this point, I, I just knew I was going to win this game. It just was a matter of uh, time because I can't see what he's going to do about my threats. I capture, he capture. Okay, now I play queen to c4. And he played king up. He just, well, this is just really bad. Oh, okay, he really doesn't have anything to do. He's trying to hold d6. Okay, now I play bishop takes h5, g8 h5, and then I play bishop to f4. I play bishop to f4, and in reality, e5 is just winning. e5 is just a crushing position. Let's say he take, and then I can play queen to d3, just winning. Um, let's go back to here for a second. I want to um, bring out something. At this position, I can also play. I can also play e5 instead of taking on h5. e5 is just it's just crushing as it comes through. He can't play d5 because I'm gonna take with the knight. So if he take check king and and then the slammer comes in, boom! Rook takes d7, crushing. King takes check. Check. Bishop takes on. I mean, how he play knight takes. It doesn't make a difference. If he play knight e7, bishop takes. Bishop takes. Queen takes. Check. Bishop back. Bishop to c4. Queen. Queen check. Bishop and queen me. That was one variation I could have went to. Okay, let's go back to the game. I played um, I played bishop takes h5, gx, bishop to f4, rook to a6, rook to d2. Now, now at this point, honestly, I stopped. I just stopped thinking at this point during the game because I knew that this is just horrible and I was going to find a way to win. Rook to e8, and queen to d3, and he just resigned at this juncture. I think he played, no, in the game, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the variation. I think in the game, yeah, the game he played rook to c6, I guess it doesn't make a difference. And I played 
queen to c3, and then he resigned at this juncture. e5 coming. He can't stop e5. I got to bring the rook on the f file. It just, it is just too much for the international master, Mark Essamon. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel. And as always, good luck, good chess, cheers.